Breaking news overnight to stop, uh, start our Sunrise Smart Start. Tensions rising in the Middle East. After two U.S. officials confirm Israel has launched a counter-strike against Iran, one missile hitting there. This comes days after we know Iran launched at least 300 drones and ballistic missiles at Israel after it killed several Iranians in an airstrike in Damascus. Top Iranian officials have been warning Israel would be hit hard if it were to hit back on Iranian territory after their unprecedented attack over the weekend. We'll see what happens now. No officials from the U.S., Iran, or Israel have issued a formal statement yet on the new strike overnight. We now have new details on the three young victims taken to the hospital after a fight outside of Rise Community School in Rochester. That happened around 6.30 last night where police say they found an 18-year-old man stabbed at the scene. A 14-year-old boy showed up at the hospital hours later and he too had been stabbed. That third victim, a 19-year-old man, reportedly hospitalized, but police say that he was not stabbed. All three expected to survive. Uh, no arrests have been made yet. Following growing demands from Republicans in the county legislature, leaders in Monroe County have agreed to brief these lawmakers on the sudden departure of former Public Health Commissioner Dr. Michael Mendoza last month. The GOP conference leader Steve Bruce says the ledge was a party included on this NDA, but didn't find out about it until the media started reporting on that non-disclosure agreement. According to the deal, Mendoza would not be investigated or disciplined and his resignation is officially chalked up to personal reasons. Mendoza in turn agreed not to come back and sue the county for anything. In a statement, county leaders say the administration will not respond to speculation or political theater in response to requests this week from the county legislature and the county's legal counsel on that will provide confidential attorney-client privilege briefings to all all lawmakers. A lot of homeowners in Rochester are still pretty fed up with the city's reassessments. They want to pause on this, pointing to concerns about a possible bump in their property tax. Yeah, and to air those concerns, they were able to join in last night's Speak to the Council event at City Hall. Well, Aran Spitzer joins us now with what they had to say. Aran. Yes, before that event, city residents rallied around the corner talking about putting a pause on the city reassessments before marching to council chambers. Previously, despite a petition to stop the reassessments, a spokesperson from the mayor's office said they would not pause this process. A lot of people, including city council members, have been vocal on the issue after some assessments went up by as much as 80%. City council member at large, Willie Lightfoot, is among those pushing for the pause. He says he's not only asking the mayor and fellow council members for a two-year delay on the plan, but also wants to have a public hearing similar to last night, allowing everyone's impact to be heard and questions answered after more data is collected. Whose taxes are going up? Who's going to be impacted? What zip codes are being impacted the most? What did they see as the trend of when the people did do their formal assessments, did it go up? At what rate did it go up? Or did it go down? At what rate did they go down? Which we believe that shows that there's flaws in the process. A spokesperson for the city gave a response to those at the event saying that there is no option to delay this process and wants to assure owners that even with an increase in assessed value, many owners will see a decrease in their taxes. Guys, back to you. We will see. All right. Thank you, Iran. Sunrise traffic here at 652 as we'll check the forecast with James momentarily. Had a little bit of fog, mainly just over Rochester and Rochester alone so far. It's a little bit clearer there. You see from the west side as things starting to pick up. Expressway is clear from any serious accidents that we've heard so far. We'll check your morning drive again as you stay with us during CBS Mornings at 725. We have the latest on the state budget this morning after the legislature passed its fifth budget extension this time only for a day. They were expected to vote on three different budget bills late last night. Now, the first of these deals involves public protection, including making an assault on a retail worker a Class E felony, which is the lowest felony level. Bumped down there from Governor Kathy Hochul's original proposal to make it a Class D felony. She talked about it during a press conference. Right now, it's a misdemeanor. Going from a misdemeanor to a felony was a dramatic change for a lot of people in our legislature who were wanted to leave it as misdemeanor. That bill would also authorize the governor to close up to five correctional facilities after giving at least 90 days notice. It also allows the state and localities to padlock illegal marijuana shops. Now lawmakers expect another late night tonight with hopes of wrapping up the budget sometime over the weekend. 
A man from Geneva faces prison time after pleading guilty to sexually assaulting two victims under the age of 13, and prosecutors believe they may not be the only victims. 30-year-old Jorge George Rodriguez Merst was arrested in February after a child spoke out about the abuse to a social worker at school. Prosecutors say he assaulted two children multiple times over the course of a few months. They did release his photo here as they are following up on potential new leads on other cases. You can reach out to the Geneva Police Department there if you have information. Taking you inside the Buffalo huddle, it's been a couple of weeks now since the Bills moved on from star whiteout Stefan Diggs, and Josh Allen hasn't really said much since then publicly until now. GM Brandon Bean talked with Allen before he made the trade, giving him a heads up. Allen made it clear that his job is to keep playing quarterback, not to worry about roster moves. Allen gives Diggs a lot of credit, saying he's instrumental in their success the last four seasons, and says he's the receiver that made him the quarterback he is now. I shared a text with him and, and got one back and just thanking him for everything that he did for me and always uh, have a spot in my heart for him and I always love that guy like a brother and um, you know, wish him nothing but the best. Allen says his only regret with his time with Diggs is not winning a Super Bowl together and now without a number one receiver, Bean argues the Bills don't truly need a number one receiver and here he is talking about that. What you need are guys that in this offense that are smart, versatile, selfless, and can make the plays that their skill set allows them to make. You know, if there's a one that pops up either in, you know, free agency or draft that makes sense for us or <clears throat> a really good two, you know, we'll do it. But I don't think having a one or not having a one, Matt, doesn't mean we can't have success, uh, you know, on offense or as a team. So why trade for Diggs in the first yeah. place? Well, anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. anyway, the draft six days away, round one Thursday from Detroit. Yeah. Yeah, seems like a lot of digs thrown in there. Yeah. Pun yeah. intended, yeah. as James pointed out. And he's trying uh, to say, yikes. we don't need the diva receivers. Yeah, but yeah, right. yeah. Well, get that out. Here's the okay. diva meteorologist to finish off the show. There you yeah, go. Yeah, just uh, talk about yourself, yes, James. Yes, exactly. I will take the rest of the time. Thank you <laughs> okay. very much. Uh, we're getting into the upper 50s to run 60. Yes, there is some rain. Uh, expected to move in right around lunchtime and then should last through the afternoon. Uh, we have cooler air on the way. You see it in the eight-day forecast. Next couple of mornings, starting off in the 30s. I like Sunday better than Saturday. More sunshine there that carries into Monday. And then uh, slowly but surely, putting a bow on April. All right. Thank you, James. And thank you for watching us this week here at Sunrise. We'll see you back here in 30. Have a great weekend. Follow News 8 wherever you are on RochesterFirst.com, Facebook, Twitter, and on our app for news and weather.